Good morning. What a beautiful day that the Lord has made. Good morning. Uh, is there any announcements to be made? Okay, then I'll have one. Uh, next Sunday, uh, we're going to have the uh, lighting of the candles in the cemetery. It's called the luminaries. Uh, it'll take place probably about 8.30 in the morning when we want to be over there to fill the bags with sand and place the candles in them and, and from there they go to each grave. Anybody, everybody is welcome to come and help. It's, like I said, it's about 8.30. Hopefully we'll have a beautiful day like today. Then in the evening, we'll have the lighting of the candles. Uh, and due to the, the time change, uh, it will probably be a little bit before sundown. That's about as close as I can call it because uh, with this time change, I can't tell you exactly what, when it's going to be. But this is in conjunction with St. Louis. They'll be doing this at the same time uh, Zion will be doing it. And it's usually, they have a church service uh, up near the mausoleum. Uh, and uh, about the time they conclude with that service is when we light the candles. So once again, everybody is welcome to come. Uh, if, if you can, bring a lighter, uh, one of the long neck lighter so you can reach down into the bag to light it. Um, I also would like to thank, over the years, Claire and Ken Ricks for the folding of the bags. They did all 500 of them, and that's a time-consuming thing. Uh, due to their illness, uh, 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 Claire was greatly taken back she was, that she couldn't do it. I said, well, I'll reach out uh, to the church body and, and uh, we divided them up among several families. I've gotten some back. I greatly thank you for that. Uh, so I think that concludes all of my stuff. I need to say, do you, do you have anything? Okay. Go ahead. Get my mic on here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. A hearty welcome to each and every one of you. A special welcome to our guests worshiping with us today and those joining us by Facebook Live also this morning. Welcome to that worshiping community. Do we have anyone here that is a first time visitor, first time visitor to the congregation, to the church service here? Okay, that's, I think everybody has been here more than once, so that's, that's great, that's wonderful. Uh, remember to fill out your pew cards, members. Uh, you can just put down your, your uh, family name and the names of the people in your family unless your contact information has changed. Uh, members, if we don't have, if you haven't already, uh, give us your contact, or new, uh, yes, leave your contact information if you have not done that already. And then if you have a prayer request, the green prayer request cards, uh, fill that out with your prayer request. Uh, please date it and, uh, and the person who's requested it also. And then pass it to the inside aisle. The usher will act right after the, uh, the sermon uh, and when we're singing the hymn, he'll go down and pick those up and bring them up to me so we can pray that in real time. Okay, let me check here and see. Okay, we know about the luminaries. Uh, Pete, is um, he had such a great time on his last outing in, in where he went to, and he wanted to go back and see some things that he get, didn't get to see, so he's taking a little bit of time off. Uh, after, after this, uh, we'll be starting the choirs together on Monday evenings, and I'll get the information, detailed information out to both the bell choir and the adult choir on that will be in the news and notes during the week. So that's going to get going on November the 8th, on Monday, November the 8th. Uh, also, too, we're doing communion this morning like we usually do, continuous, just follow the usher's uh, direction on that. All right, is there any other announcements come before the congregation this morning? Okay, let's stand and greet one of the peace of the Lord. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you.
Welcome to our Reformation Day services. The Holy Spirit does call us together as, as the people of God. Let's observe a moment of silence right now as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Amen. Our first hymn is Amazing Grace. Those of you that have a singing voice and everything can help and lead, sing out with me, okay? All right. Also, too, we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people joyfully say, Amen. Amen. We sing Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that says is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us now confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart.
God, our comforter, like our lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the grace of Jesus Christ, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all of your sins. Amen. Please be seated for our readings from Holy Scripture. Today's first reading is from Jeremiah 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each teach his, his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least of them to the greatest declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sins no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way. Though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble and the swell up, said Allah, there is a river. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolation on the earth. He makes the Lord cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Say Allah. Today's second reading is from Romans 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by his works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all who have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and justified by the grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God put forward as a proclamation of, of his blood to be received by faith. 
This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be justified and the justifier of the one who, was faith, who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you Thank you to God. God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel song and the reading of the gospel. God's word is our great heritage, and you shall be ours forever. To spread its light from age to age shall be our chief John, the 8th chapter, beginning with the 31st verse. Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. We want to invite Miss Pat and all the children to come forward, please. Miss Pat, come on up. <coughs> children, come on down. <coughs> Y'all doing okay? Okay. Well, our scripture today says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And that's from the book of John, verse, sorry, chapter 3, verse 16. Okay. So God has been talking to y'all about miracles, hasn't she, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, I believe that I... The way I understand, this story tells us about the greatest miracle of all. Today we're going to talk about the most important event since the beginning of time, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. As all of you know, Jesus was crucified and died on the cross. His friends and followers were so sad, they felt like life was over. They took Jesus down from the cross, buried him in a tomb, and that was probably more like a cave, because that's how people were buried in Israel then. Maybe that, uh, let's see, on Easter morning, some um, 
women who were followers of Jesus went to the cave to put spices on Jesus' body because that was another tradition that they had. They were so sad too because they knew Jesus was dead and they had loved him so much. But when they looked into the tomb, what did they find? He was alive. But was, was there anything in the tomb? No. It was empty, wasn't it? Yes. Oh no. The cave wasn't empty at all. It was full of Jesus' love for us. He loved us so much that he died on the cross for all of us. And when he rose from the dead, he left an empty tomb full of his love. Okay, can you see our clip? Dear Jesus, we thank you today for a tomb that seems to be empty, but was full of your love for us. Amen. Thank you. Okay, you children, before, we, before you go, let's turn around. I want you to face that away, okay? <laughs> And Garden Granny probably is Garden Granny's probably watching us tomorrow this morning. So stand up and uh, let's let's wave the Garden Granny and tell her we tell her that we miss her. We say we miss you, Garden Granny. We miss you, Garden Granny. We'll see you later. You bet. Children, thank you so much. God bless you for coming up here this morning. And Miss Pat, thank you so much for taking this taking the children's message this morning. God bless all of you. Would you fold your hands and bow your heads as I pray my pulpit prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. This morning, our sermon is based on the Old Testament lesson from Jeremiah chapter 31. Now, in order to facilitate getting to the point of this message this morning, which is a very important point and very concise, and very appropriate for this Reformation Sunday, we want to tell a little bit of a story this morning. It's a little bit more extended than I usually do for an introduction, but you'll find out how this all leads into it. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ, and all of God's people joyfully say, Amen. Amen. A beggar leeth very near a king's palace. And one day he saw a proclamation posted outside the palace gate. The king was going to be giving a great dinner, a banquet. And anyone dressed in royal garments was invited to that party. Now, the beggar was on his way and he looked at the rags that he was wearing. And he sighed. Surely only kings and their families wore royal robes, he thought. And slowly an idea crept into the beggar's mind. The audacity of it made him tremble. Would he dare ask the king? He made his way back to the palace, and he approached the guard at the gate. And he said, please, sire, I would like to speak with the king. Wait here, the guard replied, and it only took a few minutes. And he came back and he, would, he said, the mag his majesty is going to see you. And he said, and then he led the beggar into the royal court. You wish to see me? The king asked him. Yes, your majesty. I want so much to attend the banquet that you're giving, but I have no royal robes to wear. Please, sir, if you would be so bold, may I have one of your old garments so that I too and come to the banquet. You have been very wise in coming to me, the king told him. And he called to his son. And the young, his son was the young prince. He said, take this man to your room and array him in some of your clothes. And the prince did as he was, and he, as he was told. And then he, the man dressed himself in some of the prince's clothes. He says, you are now eligible for the king's banquet tomorrow night, said the prince. But even more important than that, you will never need any other clothes again. These garments will last you forever. And the 
beggar said, oh, thank you. And he cried. But as he started out to leave, he looked back at his pile of dirty old rags that were laying on the floor there. And he hesitated. What if the prince is wrong? What if he would need his old clothes again? And quickly he gathered them up. And he made a small bundle of his old rags, but he, he kept, kept falling off his lap. And he came into the banquet and he brought these clothes along with him too, these old ragged clothes, just in case. And they kept falling off his lap there at the table, so much that he missed some of the great delicacies that were being passed around. And the royal clothing would last forever. But still, that poor beggar grew fonder and fonder of his old rags. One day he was, he was, uh, he lay lying on his deathbed. And the king came in to visit him after he found out about it. And the beggar said, uh, saw the sad look on this king's face. And when he looked at the small bundle of rags that were laying there by his bed, he just got sadder and sadder about it, the king did. And then suddenly, the, the beggar remembered the prince's words to him. And he realized that his bundle of old ragged clothes cost him a lifetime. A lifetime of true royalty. And he wept bitterly at what he had done. And the king wept with him. The beggar kept a hold of his dirty old ragged clothes and would not fully receive the righteous clothes On this Reformation Sunday, we are reminded of the grace that God, through Jesus Christ, has fully given to us. And, but like that beggar, we don't always want to fully receive it. We want to kind of do things our own. And we're tempted to hang on to our old ways, even to the point of earning our way into heaven. We do not want to give up our old rags to fully embrace the riches that God, through Jesus Christ, has given to us. The beggar here was given new clothes as a gift, all paid for. And we are given the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Salvation through Christ is a free gift from the Father to his sinful children. And as we learned in confirmation class, grace is defined in this way. Grace is God's free, unmerited love for sinful people. It's free. It's unearned. There is nothing that you and I can do or say or feel or think to deserve God's love. God gave freely from the cross, from the cross of Christ for you This morning, we're going we're gonna to look at this gift of salvation and our relationship to Jesus Christ, that this salvation is truly a gift and that we can do nothing to earn it or to even make it better than it is. God decided to do this for his sin sinful people. That's how much he loved the world. And this is the gift which makes saints out of sinners. Luther liked to say that we are at the same time saint and sinner. Saint because we have the promise of salvation and sinner because that promise is not yet fully realized because we still live in our sinful condition. A pastor told me the following, this top following story. This pastor friend of mine said he was trying to get a non-member of the church to at least to examine the claims of Jesus Christ. But this person would, would bring up this argument. Well, pastor, I, I'd love to come to your church, but there are just too many hypocrites that go there. And then the pastor looked at the man right in the eye and he said, oh nuts, don't let that keep you from coming. One more was not gonna make or break us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The church is made up of saints and sinners. Sometimes the church has been called a hospital for sinners. 
But this is, but there is a quality about us which shows others that we are different. We know Jesus Christ as our one and only Savior. And our sainthood is showing. As we live in this world and bring a measure of Christ into it, Christ is there to give us the strength to live in, to live and in this world, in this world. And then in that living, we show others, we show others just who we are and who God is, who Jesus is and who the Holy Spirit is. Yes, the church is made up of saints and sinners, but there's a quality that shows us that we are different, yes. And in this relationship with Jesus Christ, we find the power to live life upon all the brokenness and all the dirty rags of this world that we encounter, encounter each and every day of our lives. It's Christ's love for us that enables us to carry on. And it is this love which says to a brother who goes to the grave, the grave of his sister and places a flower at the headstone to stand there in silent grief, shedding no tears. It is in this love from Christ which says that, that it is all right to cry, to shed a tear, and to feel sorrow and loneliness and the pain of death, physical death. And it is the love of Christ who, who continues to say that to the grieving brother, I will redeem those tears that you shed. I will bring victory out of the stain of death and I will bring you to an assurance of the promise that there is a resurrection for all who believe in Jesus Christ is their one and only Savior. It's the love of Christ, which says to a widow who sits in a chair that has been finally molded itself to her, it may seem, and as she watches the news and the local forecast and the sports, she really has no interest in it. And she rises from the chair and she goes up to the TV. And it's a time to call it a day. And she pats the TV on the top and says, good night, see you the next day. It's the love of Christ which says to this lonely widow, I have come to free you from your loneliness. I have come to help you to break the bonds of this despair. I have come to free you so that you can live life to the fullest. Yes, even you. And I have come to free you from the loneliness that allows you to become a member of a community, a community of Christ, in which you will have brothers and sisters who will keep you company. It is the love of Jesus Christ which says to a man who has just lost his business and is wondering how he is going to support his family since he has no more income. And it is the love of Christ which says, I am with you to give you the courage and the strength to try again. And it is the love of Christ which assures him that God the Father will provide as he does for the, for, for the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. And it is the love of Christ which says to a couple who is struggling with their relationship, that he can come and help each one forgive the wrong. And in that forgiveness, they can continue to love each other. It is the love of Christ which says to those who are living with a chronic illness, even though you prayed for healing, my grace is sufficient for you and has given you the courage to live on. It is the love of Jesus Christ which says to those who are burdened with guilt, guilt of wrongs which, which they have done, guilt of feeling that someone you are, someone you know is, or don't even know is responsible for the wrongs of others, that, and that they are in your care, such as parents and teachers, and yes, even pastors. It is the love of Christ which says to each person here today, and each of you out there in, on Facebook Live, I love you in spite of yourself. And because of that love, you can have courage and the strength, the strength and the conviction to change, to begin again. And through my love, this is all through my love for you. It's the love, the 
of Jesus Christ, which says to each of us here today, that you have been changed and you are saved. And in that salvation, you, yes, you can be little Christ to those around you. And you are indeed saint and sinner in, in that paradox. And you can live in the love of Christ. And because of that love, you can reach out your hand to those around you who are, who, who are encountering the brokenness of life. And it's the love of Christ which says to each of us that you have been given a gift today and forever. A gift of salvation. It is not something that you have earned, no. And it is given freely to you. And with that gift, you are, have the challenge to be engaged in this world as both saint and sinner. God says in Jeremiah, and I will write upon this upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Amen? Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all of our human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's stand and sing. We sing the Reformation hymn, A Mighty Fortress. A mighty fortress is our God, a sword and shield in glorious. He breaks the cruel oppressor's rod and brings salvation.
Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of the Church Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Glory, honor, and praise be to you, Lord God of heaven and earth. When we consider the heavens, the sun, the moon, the stars, and the planets, we are amazed that you would have any intention to us. Yet, according to your word, you determined our destiny before you laid the foundation of the earth. Most, Most amazing of all is that you provided for our salvation from the very beginning that we might one day enter into your rest. Accept our sincere thanks and praise. We confess that there have been times when we have forgotten your merciful kindness toward us. We have often been blind toward your marvelous works. We have read and listened to your word, yet failed to respond with truly believing hearts. We have lagged in zeal in bringing the good news of your salvation to all the spiritually blind. We have often stopped working before finishing the task you have called us to do. For these and many other offenses against your holy will. Forgive us, Lord. Send us your Holy Spirit, that he may keep our eyes open to your merciful kindness. Give us vision to see our duty in the broader concepts of your kingdom. Help us recognize the opportunities to serve others. Let us see our neighbor's needs and give us wisdom and strength to meet those needs. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you with all the requests that we have today, those we have listed, but also those that we, have, we hold silently in our hearts right now and observe a moment of silence to lift those personally into your throne of grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Special prayer request today for, for rain for this area and all areas that are in need. The land is dry and parched, Lord. Please send us your life-giving rain in abundance. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. A special prayer request today for Steve Soriano, who is dealing with cancer, and also for his wife, who is attending to him. Give her strength. Lord, Make your presence known to Steve and his wife, Patty. Lord, guide Steve during this time. Comfort him with your presence. Touch him with your healing hand. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Special prayer request for Pastor John Bielko, the president of the Texas District LCMC. He recovers from, from pneumonia at this time in the hospital, but we also pray for him and his family at the passing of his wife, Kathy. Gracious Heavenly Father, at times we just sometimes don't know why, why you do what you do, but we come to you now for strength, for courage, and for your love. Be with Pastor John Bielefeld as he recovers from pneumonia, but also be with him and his, and his whole family. Comfort them with your presence and your love at, at the passing of Kathy, knowing that she is waiting for them in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. A special prayer request for Jackson Dayatley, Bill Stakey's grandson who has been hospitalized 
but I found out uh, yesterday that he's, he's starting to do better. Lord, we just pray that you would be with, uh, with Jackson at this time. Have him continue in his recovery, Lord, and be with the entire, entire family, especially with Bill and, uh, and with Emily. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And prayers also for Emily Stakey, uh, who was in the hospital, but she is home and is doing better. This is complications with a tooth extraction. Lord, be with her, Emily now as she heals from, from this, Lord, and just comfort her with your presence, your love, and your healing. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. A special prayer request for Betty Steuben, sister of Tom Page, who is suffering from cancer and also had a stroke. Lord, be with Betty during this time also. Of, of, uh, things just not going right, Lord. She needs to feel your love and your presence by her side. Touch her with your healing hand and bring her full and complete healing. Lord, in your mercy. A uh, special prayer request here for, for Denise, who was diagnosed with cancer. Lord, be with Denise also and her family too. Give, give Denise your healing hand. Lord, in your mercy. A special prayer request for Ronald, who has asthma and pneumonia. They would be with him in his affliction and bring him healing. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And finally, Lord, a prayer for Patty Smith, and this comes from Ellen Smith, who recently was diagnosed with breast cancer. A biopsy was done, and we're waiting for the results right now. Lord, a time of waiting is never easy for any of us, and I'm sure it's not for Patty. Please just be with Patty during this time. Comfort her with your presence. Give her your strength and your mercy, Lord. And let, let the, uh, the test come back as negative on this, Lord. And always bring her your healing. Lord, in your mercy. May we recognize your hand in our afflictions, Lord, that through them we may be strengthened. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. We are now received our offering for the work of our Lord's kingdom. I think we all know this little gospel light of mine. Let's listen that together. This little gospel light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm gonna let it shine, hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine, hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. God of abundance. You cause streams to break forth. Please join with me in prayer. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts we have given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand as you're able, and if, you're, and if you so wish, please join hands together, and we pray the perfect prayer that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are the body of Christ. 
one true spirit, we were baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace. And build us up our common life. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, to pray. After he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, and after he had supped and given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the New Testament, given and shed for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated. We'll, we'll commune the celebrant and myself. And then if somebody would start leading, uh, 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 and after that, start leading uh, the communion hymns, please. I would appreciate that very much. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of Christ, freely given for you. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, freely given for your forgiveness. Go in peace and serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Take the body of Christ given to you. Take the blood of Christ shed. table is prepared. Come to the Lord's table. If somebody could lead in blessed assurance. Welcome. Take and eat. This is the true body of Christ that is freely given for you. True body of Christ that is freely given for you to be the Lord. Of our Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of Christ freely given for you to be the Lord. Take and eat. This is the true body of Christ that is freely given for you to be the Lord. The Lord that gladness. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of Christ that is freely given for you. Go in peace and serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of Christ freely given for you. Take the This is the true body of Christ, freely given for you. God, peace and serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of Christ that is freely given for you. Go in peace and serve the Lord with gladness. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of Christ, freely given for you. All you have done, I am my Take and eat the true body of Christ, freely given for you. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of Christ, freely given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ, Free by the price, freely given to you, glory to serve the Lord. This is my song, praising my Savior. Take and eat. This
this is the true body of Christ, freely given for you. Go and preach and serve the Lord the Baptist. Amen. Take and eat the true body of Christ, freely given for you. Go and serve the Lord the Baptist. Take and be. This is the true body of Christ that is freely given for you. Go in peace. Freely given for you, going pieces of the Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of Christ. Freely given for you, going pieces of the Bless you and keep you all as his special children. Jesus loves you all. Take this is the true body of Christ that is freely given for you, going to serve the Lord. Freely given for you, go in peace and serve the Lord of Christ. God, the blood of Christ, Welcome to the Lord's you. table. Take and eat. Christ this Christ is Christ. the true body of Christ that is freely given for you. Go in peace and serve the Lord of Christ. Amen. We need the blood of Christ shed for you. Welcome to the Lord's, Lord's table. Take Christ and eat the true body of Christ freely given for you. Go in peace and serve the Lord of Christ. Amen. Carol, the blood of Christ shed for you.
Congregation will please stand as you're able. <clears throat> and now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast and true faith unto life everlasting. Depart now in joy and in peace. Amen. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. And all God's people boldly say, Amen. we sing our sending song. Yeah. On my Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before, Christ the royal master leads against the Exit today, we sing the doxology. Praise. 
is God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, Serve him who first served us, and may all of God's people joyfully say, Amen. Amen.